A new year, a new video. I'm back, baby. How's it going on, guys and girls? Welcome back to Burnt Aquila Painting. My name is Graham, and welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be looking at glazing, what it is, the basic fundamentals, and how we can use glazing to get smooth transitions in our painting. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how. But first, I just wanna say sorry I haven't been around for the last couple of months, and thank you for sticking with me. I've had some tech issues that have led to me being burnt out mentally, trying to edit, but those tech issues are now gone. New year, new videos, we're back. Also, more big news, I am now on Patreon, so if you guys wanna get involved and support me and the channel, there's a link down below, there's two tiers, there's a Discord server for everyone to chat in and ask any questions and build this community. So, more information about that later, check out the link below. So, back to today's video, which is glazing. Glazing is a painting technique basically using incredibly thin layers of paint to build up colors and transitions slowly. I found it to be the best technique to get really smooth transitions. Glazing can be used in different ways for different things, but today we're gonna to look on how we can use it to get super smooth blends. So what are you gonna need? You're gonna need your chosen colors, a soft brush with a good body to it, water, and some kitchen roll. As a bonus, I do recommend a wet palette as well. The reason being, you don't need a wet palette to do this, but it is useful to have. I do recommend you get yourself one or you make one yourself. They keep your pet pets they keep your pet sweater they keep your paints wetter for longer extending your work time with that paint saving you time and money in the long run and if you use those citadel paints like i do primarily you're gonna want to save every penny i've made mine from a simple citadel tub if you want to see a video on how i make it and my thoughts on the wet palette let me know in the comments below so glazing what is it as we said before glazing is basically using very very thin paint to build up color or tint to the previous layer below. That's basically it, super simple. Many people are afraid to use glazing because they think it's one of those skills that is beyond my skill level. Well, after today, you're not gonna be one of those people. With a little bit of practice, you can show your friends how easy glazing really is. I found the easiest way to use glazing at first is to go from your chosen color to black or a very, very dark variation of your chosen color. This is because black isn't actually a color, it's a shade. In other words, black is an absence of light and white being the other end of the spectrum. Now knowing this, taking one color and making it darker is a lot easier than transitioning from one true color to another true color, battling those colors in between them on the color wheel. In this video, we're gonna be painting this Necron Scorpec Destroyer's blades for my Sautec army. Because the blades are nice and flat, it's gonna be easy to show you how to build up color but also because of the different segments on the blades, it's gonna create a really effective energy blade effect with glazing. This is what I just have to hand. You don't need to use Citadel paints. You can use Vallejo, Scale 75, P3, any company's paints that you have to hand as well. So I'm gonna use generic terms for the colors I'm using instead of Rakar Flesh, Cantor Blue, Evil Sun Scarlet, Wah Flesh, White Scar. No, that's pretty self-explanatory. We're starting from the black base coat. This is gonna be our darkest point for our Necron blades, but you can start from a mid-tone color, but that can be a little bit more difficult to explain. So we're just starting from the black base coat, working our way up through the different colors we're gonna be using. So we're gonna need black, a mid-tone green, dark green, a light green, and then a yellow. Don't worry if you don't have all these colors, you can mix them as well to create them. That's what I do with my bright green mix the mid-tone green with my yellow to get that color. First, we're gonna block in our mid-tone colors, which is the dark green and the medium green. Don't worry about being super neat at this point. We can go back later and neaten up any mistakes we make. The effect I'm going for is an energy blade effect with the glow alternating on each face of the weapon. A massive shout out to SJ Daru. 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 I'm butchering your name, I'm really sorry. <laughs> she told me about alternating the colors when doing energy blades to make it really pop. Go check her out on Instagram. Thank you very much, SJ Daru. 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 
Thanks very much for showing me this. Go check her out, link to her Instagram in the description. And tell her I said hi. Once we've got that good opacity on those greens, the next part is to start building those transitions with glazing. This is where you're gonna need that soft, good body brush. I'm using a size three from Artist Opus. I find that Artist Opus brushes are really good, high quality and great body with also a really fine tip. So even on the larger size of the brush, you can still do those detail work, but holds a lot of paint as well. Unfortunately, this isn't sponsored by them, but Artist Opus, if you're ever wanting to sponsor me, I'm not gonna say no. The size three has a really good body to it, and that's gonna come in really handy when glazing. Basically, the more body the brush has, the more paint you can hold at any one time. So you're not wasting time going back and forth and back and forth from your wet palette to your mini. Now we begin glazing the color, building up that transition slowly. Also, a little bit later on in the video, I have another tip on how to smooth those transitions out if you're not quite happy with them. We start by thinning down the paint until it's basically a tinted paint water. So thin that the first four or five layers, you're not gonna be able to see any difference. Don't worry, it's completely normal when working with super thin paints. And now you have your dirty paint water, sorry, glaze. You're gonna to need to dab off most of that moisture on a paper towel. Some people prefer the paper towel to be damp. Some people prefer it to be dry. That is up to you. Play with both, see what you like. Hang on, Graham. Didn't you just say you wanted a good body brush to get the most out of the paint and now you're getting rid of it? Yep, you got me. The reason why you want to get rid of a lot of the moisture on the brush, moisture, moist, 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 is because we don't want to flood the area we're painting like a wash. We want the glaze to go on like paint, but because it's so thin, we really need to make sure we're controlling what's going on the mini. So, as you said, we want to control the flow of paint off the brush as best we can. You want a moist brush, not just damp, but also not wet. This bit's gonna take a little bit of trial and error on your part. You're gonna see how it flows off the brush and what you're comfortable with. Make sure it's not sopping wet. You want it to come off the brush like it was a normal thinned paint. A good idea before you put the paint on the mini is to test the moisture on say your thumbnail or your hand or on anything to see how the paint is coming off the brush and onto your mini. Too much moisture it's going to pool and drip. Not enough moisture it's going to be sparse and patchy when you run your brush over your test piece. You're looking for a smooth, consistent line of moisture when you drag your paintbrush across. When applying the glaze, you want to finish your brush stroke towards the color you're painting. As we're going from darkest to lightest, you want to glaze towards your lightest color. This is because the paint on your brush often leaves a small pool of paint wherever you lift your brush off the mini. Also remember, for the best results, to use the side of your brush to ensure you're glazing in one smooth stroke. In my mind, this is one of the main reasons why you can get a smooth transition. The less brush strokes you use, the less texture you're creating. If you're using the side of your brush, you can hit a lot more of the surface in one sweep. So we're building up the color with multiple passes of glaze, leaving each layer to dry fully. If we don't leave it to dry, you tear the paint below, which creates a really nasty texture. Also with each pass, you want to start the brush a little closer to your end point where you're lifting the brush off the mini. Because we're using such thin paint, this will create a smooth transition from one color to the next. And the starting point of where you put your brush on the mini won't be seen to the naked eye. Now we're happy with those transitions, there's one tip we can do just to smooth them out even more. And that is go back to your mid-tone color, get a really nice thin glaze consistency and go over the whole thing with that mid-tone. Doing this can smooth out any imperfections in the layers. Really helps to make your mind think that this is one smooth transition instead of many different multiple layers. With this, I like to use a wash, nice and thin down with a little bit of medium and a little bit of water. The same technique, dab it off on a paper towel and glaze over the top. The only problem with this is where I use Citadel paints, they can come out quite satin. So once the whole mini's finished with the base, I go over it with a matte varnish just to bring that satin sheen down. We want to do this layered approach to each of our colors, remembering to glaze a smaller and smaller portion, getting closer to our highlight color as we're painting from dark to light. This technique is no way near the fastest way to paint. You won't start seeing changes straight away. So get comfortable. But once you start building up those layers, you'll start to see the transition come about. There is a lot of back and forth with this technique. Don't be afraid to go back to a previous color and try and get a better transition if you're not happy. The end result will thank you for it and you'll be happier with it as well. And that is your glazing done. 
all I do next is highlight the edges with a really bright green, loads of yellow, a little bit of green in it, mix that in just to really give it that pop on the edges. that is the first video for 2021 done. I just want to say a massive thank you for you guys for sticking with me over the months that I haven't been uploading, but I'm back and I'm going to be uploading every two weeks or so. Saying that, if you want to support the channel, the best way is through my Patreon. There you can support the channel for as little as £2 a month and get access to our Discord server. But if you want to be a little bit more and a little bit more involved with me at Bernard Quiller Painting, you can. For just £5 a month, you can get Patreon shoutouts, whip updates, request ideas or miniatures you want to see me paint. Also, you get access to the Discord server as well, where we can chat minis, send me pictures of what you're working on, ask for any tips and tricks from the community themselves as well. So link down in the description, guys. And I hope to see you all on there. And let's build this community. Saying that, I want to shout out my very first patron, Birds at Our Catres. Thanks very much for your support. So that's all from me at Burn Aquila Painting. Thanks so much for sticking around all the way to the end. Remember to like and subscribe if you like what you see here and want to see more content from me. Smash that bell icon so you don't miss anything, Burn Aquila, and leave a comment below to let me know what you think of this glazing video. See you in the next one. Peace! The effect I'm going for is an alternating Get it right. So get comfortable, but don't worry, it won't take too long before you start to see these Mmm. <laughs>